Yesterday was the beginning of the early signing period, and just like the college football season and coaching carousel, it was a wild one. In this video, I will go over some of the winners and some of the losers of the early signing period so far. The first big winner I want to mention is Jackson State. Whether it was because of NIL money, or because of Coach Sanders, or just because he wanted to go to Jackson State, does not change the fact that they landed the top prospect in the class of 2022 in Travis Hunter. Sanders even came in and pulled the rug on his alma mater in Florida State, where Hunter had been committed to for over a year. This decision was truly shocking and amazing for anyone who's not a Florida State fan. This is great for HBCUs because it means there will be more televised games over the next few years and it may result in other top prospects choosing to follow in Hunter's footsteps. CBS Sports writes, there has never been a recruit more talked about on any one signing period than Hunter, with reports that the name, image, and likeness deals he'll get at Jackson State has a significant amount of money attached to it, Hunter won on Wednesday and his brand will see a significant spike. That doesn't even include the fact that he's an elite player the number one prospect in the country for a reason. A guy who projects at cornerback will now get a chance to play for one of the greatest cornerbacks who ever played the game in Sanders. Also, rumors came out throughout the day that Hunter may not be the only highly rated prospect coming to Jackson, Mississippi. The biggest loser of this all is Florida State, who thought they had the top prospect locked down. They did land five-star recruit Sam McCall and four-star athlete Ezra Thomas but this one is going to hurt for a long time and may cause the heat warmers to be turned on high for Mike Norvell's job security and fans' minds even though he just signed an extension. Add in the fact that they lost a player to a coach who played at Florida State and they could have hired to be their head coach a few years back, even if it may not have worked out, still leaves a bad taste in your mouth that even mouthwash won't help. On top of that, 24-7 Sports writes they saw four-star receiver Devon Mortimer flipped Louisville and four-star offensive lineman Julian Armella, who many viewed as a layup for the Seminoles, announced that he will likely wait until February to sign with a school of his choice. On top of that, four-star lineman Tyree West, who some thought was an FSU lean, picked Tennessee and four-star pass rusher Nigelique Kelly, who at one time was committed to the Seminoles, announced that he was signing with rival Miami. And let's not forget about legacy prospect Marvin Jones Jr., whose father starred for the Seminoles. Florida State didn't wake up this week expecting to sign Jones, but him choosing the Georgia Bulldogs on Wednesday was another twist of the knife. The crazy thing is, Florida State will still end up with a strong top 20 class, but people will only talk about how they lost Hunter. Also tossed in the fact that they lost their offense coordinator Kenny Dillingham to Oregon, it's a 24 hour span fans will want to forget fast. The next winners I want to talk about are Texas A&M, Alabama, and Georgia, who are recruiting at another level this year, separating themselves from everybody else. A&M has had the top recruiting class at the time of recording, bringing in five-star defensive lineman Anthony Lucas and four-star defensive lineman Anaya White. Their biggest signing day pulls on that side of the ball, and they beat Texas for four-star offensive lineman Cam Dewberry. They also held on to five-star defensive lineman Walter Nolan, who Tennessee tried to flip but failed to, ensuring Texas A&M moved to the top. Alabama had a great day bringing in elite wide receiver prospect Chaz Preston, a top defensive back Earl Little Jr., and four-star defensive lineman Jaheed Campbell, and Curtis Perry. They also add Eli Ricks to the transfer portal, while Georgia brought in Marvin Jones Jr. and Dalen Everett, two five-star prospects. Clemson has been considered a loser yesterday. Not only did they lose their offensive coordinator and defensive coordinators in the coaching cycle, but they also lost three commits, all from IMG Academy. Clemson isn't used to losing prospects, and they don't offer a lot of players, which has helped in the past, but may backfire this year. They currently have the 16th ranked recruiting class, but may drop to the 20s if Jerron Kanak flips to Oklahoma. They have a 12-person class that includes two special teams players, and have lost nine players to the transfer portal. They will be operating at a serious scholarship deficit, with less than 75 players on scholarship according to 24-7 Sports. Another winner is Texas, who set themselves up for the future. Not only did Texas sign Quinn Ewers, one of the best quarterback prospects we have seen in years, but Sarkeesian and his staff also flipped three players Wednesday, from the likes of Michigan, Ohio State, and Oklahoma. They added two other and four-star offensive linemen Malik Ogbo and three-star wide receiver Savon Reed. A few nights ago, Texas landed top 150 offensive linemen Natua Umazulo, and they are also the favorites to win the Devin Campbell Sweet Stakes in February, according to the Crystal Ball predictions. 
They will be adding a lot of lineman talent and bringing in a great quarterback already having a great running back and wide receiver on campus. They currently have the 5th best recruiting class and 4th best overall class when you include transfers. They may be building something special. Washington currently has the worst recruiting class in the Pac-12 and has only signed 5 players at the time of recording, not counting graduate transfers. They lost a handful of commitments but are still in the running for some high level offensive linemen. It may not be terrible when all said and done, but as of now it doesn't look great. Michigan had a great day yesterday using the momentum from their great 2021 season in their recruitment. They flipped Notre Dame wide receiver commit Marion Walker and landed the number one prospect in Oregon wide receiver Darius Clements. Four star safety Keon Sab, who was committed to Clemson for a long time and landed former Oklahoma defensive lineman commit Derek Moore. It was a day Wolverine fans should be happy about. On the other side of the Big Ten, Nebraska struggled to get any momentum and ended the day with the 14th best recruiting class in the conference. There were rumors they could flip Oregon commit Ben Roberts, but he signed with the Ducks. The lack of job stability throughout the season for Scott Frost may have cost them this part of the recruiting season. Auburn started their week off rocky, but the second half of the week has seemed to turn it around. It looks like Tank Bigsby will not follow Bo Nix into the portal and they landed some big time recruits on Wednesday. Deontay Scott is a big, ready to play corner and they flipped linebacker Robert Woodyard from Alabama while also landing wide receiver Camden Brown who could become a go-to target for quarterback signing Holden Garner. A few days ago, the Tigers slipped four-star cornerback Jadarian Rhyme from LSU, beat out plenty for four-star defensive back Austin Osbury, and also locked up the number one Juco safety, Marquise Gilbert. They currently have the 14th best recruiting class, and they could look to the portal to add even more talent, like Harsons did his first offseason on the Plains. Virginia had one hand tied behind their back, going into the early signing period only hiring Tony Elliott over the weekend. They lost in-state offensive lineman commit Brody Meadows, who flipped to Virginia Tech in the morning. They didn't have a large class, and Meadows was the second best player in the class at the time. I want to end this video on a positive note, so let's talk about some teams that could also be considered major winners. Florida looked like they were going to have a bad day, but pulled off two stunners bringing in linebacker Sherman James and five-star safety Kamari Wilson. The Gators also landed four-star defensive back Devin Moore to start the day. That's the type of recruiting effort Florida fans have craved from their coach and a great way for Napier to endear himself to the fan base. Missouri and Kentucky both finished the day with top 15 classes, landing some high profile recruits today. Personally, I had a lot of fun covering the first day of the early signing period, but who do you think won the first day? Let me know in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out my other videos right here. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel, and as always, remember to embrace the grind.